evening. How are we doing for time? Well, a couple of minutes past. So it looks like there's a few people here. So um, welcome. Um, I'll give it a few seconds to get going just to let everybody sort of catch up and join in. But um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Carl, Carl Thomas, um, which it says on the screen down there, or it's even there, isn't it? Whoever it is. Um, <clears throat> I'm the founder of Carl Thomas Photography, which is my dog uh, photography business, as well as Beyond the Lens Academy. And so um, I've been doing quite a lot of Facebook Lives over the last sort of few months with the Academy and all the various things that we've been doing. But a few people have asked me about actual webinars. So this is one of those. So what I'm going to be doing this evening, um, just looking at the comments in who's saying hello. Evening, Alan. Evening, Phil. Um, is just spending, you know, half an hour, an hour, just talking about, obviously not all the whole detail, because there's a lot involved with taking your, your hobby uh, or your existing business into a different place in terms of photography. But I wanted to just share with you, you know, a little bit about my journey, you know, what, what it was like for me and the kind of things we do in the academy. Um, I've had a lot of people ask about this over the last few months. Um, and I think it's driven by a lot of things. Uh, some people um, with the current circumstances have found themselves turning to their photography because they've had more time to do it. And as a result of that, potentially um, looking at starting up new businesses and going in different directions. So there's lo lots to talk about, lots to think about. So obviously a few people said hello in the, in the comments. If you've got any questions, um, I will get to them as we go through the presentation. It's not a big, long presentation. Um, as I say, I think the whole thing should last no more than an hour if lots of people ask questions, but maybe even a bit less than that. So I'm just conscious of your, being respectful of your time and all that kind of stuff. So um, I will get started in a second. So let's just see. So the Beyond the Lens Academy website link is in the comments. Um, you'll see it on the post somewhere here. Um, so um, if you need to sort of uh, see what we do and all that kind of stuff, that's all on the website. So, you know, you can have a look there. So um, before we get started, evening, Andrew, um, if anybody's got any, um, anybody who's here who's not a member of the Academy, who's thinking about setting up a business, or has a business, I'd be interested in the comments to see what, you know, what are your challenges? What, what is it, what's made you come and listen to, or hopefully listen to what I've got to say? You know, are, are you, you know, are you thinking about setting up a business or have you always wanted to, but have never thought you could do it? You know, what, what kind of things are, are your push points, if you like? What is it that is either holding you back from it? Or if you've already got a business and we've got a number of people in the academy who already have a business, um, what is it you want to do differently? Are you looking to change direction? Uh, are you looking to get more customers? Is it not profitable enough for you? Is there lots of competition? All those kind of things um, are things that I hear about very regularly. So you pop those sort of things in the comments. Um, let's have a little look. Phil James, let's see. Let's have a look. Good evening, Carl. Thanks for the chat we had the other night. Still thinking about it all. Oh, OK. Yeah, brilliant. No, well, welcome. That's a part of the reason I like to do these webinars, because um, it's an ongoing process. And sometimes it's not the sort of thing you can look at and go, oh, I like the Elliot Academy. Let's pile in. Um, <clears throat> I will say, though, have a look at the reviews. Um, evening, Dale. Have a look at the reviews on the Facebook page, on the Beyond the Lens Academy Facebook page. Um, you'll see what our, our members are saying about the Academy. So we seem to be doing some things right. Um, so, um, oh, interesting. Yeah, brilliant. Excellent. So nice, nice amount of people here. So why don't I get started? It's probably the best thing, isn't it, rather than me witter on. So <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen. And so this, this technology should work. I've been assured it will do. So if I go over here, there we go. And uh, I'm just waiting for that to appear on the, the screen next to me so I can see. Um, it takes a few seconds, but you should be seeing a screen now that's got my name at the top and a title called Turning Your Passion for Photography into a Business. And the logo is for my photography business and uh, Beyond the Lens Academy. So I'm just going to make sure that's appearing. It looks like it is. Um, so I see uh, Kirsten, I'll, I'll come back to some of these questions. So I'm looking to move from a hobby to a business. I do a mixture of free work and paid. Think the biggest thing for me is confidence. Yes, absolutely, Kristen. That is such a such a common thing, and it's one of the. I think it's one of the first slides I go into actually. So, um, from what I can see on the screen, it all looks to be working. You should you still see my little face, um, unfortunately. But the main thing is you can see the the, the deck as it were. So, um, let's get started. As I say, it's not a lot, lot. It's not a massive amount of slides, but it's um, it's the content I think that's important. So, um, and I'll keep putting the questions in the comments. So what I'll do is when I finish this presentation, I'll go back to the main screen so I can see you all and I'll go through them and answer them individually. Uh, so I think that's a really important part of it. So Carl Thomas Photography, let me just tell you a little bit about me if you don't know. So five and a half years ago, nearly six years ago now, I uh, turned my passion for photography, which frankly was a hobby at the time, and love for dogs um, into a business. Um, and this is the sort of stuff, these images you can see on the screen here, the kind of things that people know me for now. Um, that bottom left image of the sort of action shots, the, um, the black background shots. Um, there's two of my dogs here. The top left is Badger and the bottom right is um, Badger as well in, the, on the, uh, uh, in a chair when we're sat out in the warmer weather that we had earlier on this year. And there's Arlo, a fairly recent client too. So, you know, I set this dog photography business up 
frankly, as a bit of a hobby. Um, and the rest is history. I mean, fast forward to now, there's nearly 30,000 people that follow me on the various different social media platforms. I have a very, very successful business, lots of very, very happy clients. And I get to spend my life or my days out and about <clears throat> meeting clients, meeting dogs and getting paid for it and getting paid handsomely for it, to be honest. So that's kind of my background. Now, I'll just while I've got this slide up here, I just want to cover up a couple of things that people often say to me um, and we'll do a little bit more about it in, in a minute but some people often say to me oh yeah but you've got great camera equipment and it's very expensive and you need all the, all the right kind of gear and certainly if you're going to be a professional photographer and obviously this is dogs that's my business but we've got people in the academy who are wedding photographers people who are landscape photographers newborn photographers so the whole genre so that the skills in terms of running a business for photography apply to all the genres um, but just to debunk, debunk one theory first of all do you need to have I use a Canon 1DX Mark II, which is like a 5,000 pound camera and a 2,000 pound lens. Do you need that? No, you don't. The top left image on this, this frame you're looking at and the bottom right are iPhone photos, or I should say smartphone photos, because that's the politically correct thing to say. So now I'm not suggesting you go and set, you, you'll set a professional business using your iPhone, but it just shows you what kind of photography you can achieve with inexpensive equipment. So we'll come on to that. Anyway, that's a little bit about me. Um, that's what I do. You'll you've probably follow me. This is actually being streamed to the dog photography page. Uh, so all my lovely clients and, and followers on there will be watching this and seeing these pictures, which is great. So let's get into some of these sort of more meaty information. It looks like we've got some interesting questions coming up, which is great. Um, so the challenges. These are the four, four things that come up uh, most prominently. And I've, I've already touched on uh, some of them. And I think um, Kirsten mentioned confidence. Let's have a little look. Yes, you did. It's the number one challenge. Um, and one of the, and, and what we do in the academy is we help people with that because let me tell you, confidence is something that every photographer I've ever worked with, I wouldn't say they all lack it, but what, what you will find is the difference between how a, a every photographer I've ever worked with feels about their photography and the reality are, is very different. And what normally happens is, or 99% of the time, their photography is always a lot better than they actually think it is. Um, and that's just because um, of a number of things. Part of it is because it's a personal thing. When you're taking photos and you're working on photography, you're giving your soul or, or you're, you know, it's like when you're at school, you're drawing pictures. It's it's an art form. So it's, it's, you're giving a part of yourself. So there's an element of that that causes it. But the biggest thing is, um, is there isn't really a, a, an ongoing feedback loop, which is part of the reason I set up the Academy was because photography whether it's landscape photography, dog photography, wedding photography or anything, is a bit of a lonely kind of lonely sort of existence in that you go and use your camera. You might go out for the afternoon taking landscape shots or like I might do go and spend, do, spend some time with a client or do dogs or whatever it might be. You don't typically have a, a very robust feedback loop. You don't have people. Sure, you will have your friends and family who say that's a nice image. That's a nice image. Or I quite like that. Or maybe you should do that. But they don't they're not necessarily giving you what I would call critical analysis. They're not saying to you that's a really good image because um, and that's a much better image than the one next door because and that lack of loop, that lack of feedback is one of the things that drives a lack of confidence. Um, and trust me, I've got lots of people in the academy who um, obviously the academy is for all levels, as, as you may well know. And obviously have a look at the link www.beyondlenscademy.com. It tells you everything in there, uh, in there about how we do for all the different levels. But for the pros in there, I'm working with a lot of different people at different levels. So I've got people who've had businesses for years and how we've helped them make more money and sort of you know, improve their confidence in terms of the, what they sell things for. But I've got people who've joined the academy as as got one right now. She joined the academy a few months ago as a beginner. Had no intentions of doing anything more than become better uh, equipped with a camera, and is now starting right now. I had a one to one with that client today, talking about getting the Facebook page set up and the website set up, and is now going to be turning um, professional. And now there is a description that goes around about being a professional, which sort of kind of says, "Oh well, unless you're doing." If 50% or more of your income comes from photography, that makes you a professional. I don't really subscribe to those sort of things. I think at the end of the day, it's about what you want to do. And for some people, that is just working on a part-time basis. Some people have got a full-time job and they want to make um, their photography pay a little bit on the side, perhaps to pay towards some of the equipment that you might buy or the lenses or whatever it is. That's how some of the most successful photographers in the world that you may follow or that you think of, they've all probably started like that. So confidence is something that is very common. So if it's something you're, you're thinking about, as Kirsten said, uh, you're not alone. Um, and we work very, very closely with people to sort of help help understand that. Now, the next one on this slide, equipment. And I've, I've already touched on it. Um, do you need lots of very expensive equipment? No. You need the equipment to do the job, is what I would say. So, you know, what does that look like? So for me, I yes, I use a 1DX Mark II, um, 
which is a, a, a Canon sort of pro one. I mean, the Nikon have got the same sort of gear. Um, part of the reason it costs as much as it does is if I go back to this image here, or this section of the image here, this picture on the bottom left here, um, which is a, an action shot that's very famous, it's been in the press and, and, and the client loved it and all that kind of stuff. Um, my camera, part of its cost is it's, it's robust, it's, water, it's weatherproofed, uh, it's a magnesium alloy, the shutter's rated for half a million shutter releases. You know, it, 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 a lot of those things are important, but they don't make the pictures any better. Now, in this particular image here on the bottom here, Another thing people say, oh, yeah, well, that's a really fast shot. So that's why you you know, you've got that because of your camera. Well, this is a shot. And I often talk about this on my Facebook lives. So that the Spaniel with his ears up on the bottom left here. This is a shot that you could take with a, an entry level camera because I use a thing called pre-focus. So I'm focusing on the header. Take the photo at the right time when the dog jumps over. As long as you can press the button at the right time, you can take an image like that. Um, and I'll come on to show you a little bit, a couple of examples of, of that um, when we finish this presentation and we're sort of getting into questions. Looks like there's a few people here, which is good. So equipment, um, you don't need to spend a fortune. The best camera is the one you've got with you. Um, one of the things I'm doing in the academy all the time is helping people make sure they can get the best out of the equipment they've got. It is not always about upgrading and spending a lot of money on equipment. So hope that ticks that box. Now, this is a very popular one, this, um, and it, this happens in any genre of photography. If you're thinking about becoming a, a photographer that, um, where you can generate income from it or you know sell your work, some people will say, oh, people will pay for it. Um, and that's just not true. If you've got the marketing right and you've got the all the various component parts that you need, so a proper Facebook page and that structure properly, um, a, a good website, and your and your work is of a, a decent standard, people will pay for it. But it's about how you position it. Um, and this kind of kind of goes into the next the, the next point quite nicely in terms of there's lots of cheap competition locally. And there are dog photography. I mean, I've been doing it for five years. Um, the dog photography. I mean, I've been a photographer for thirty years, but. Um, and there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people doing it. And, you know, the Beyond Lens Academy, um, we've got people in there who are setting up new businesses literally, you know, most weeks at the moment, which is great. And, I, you know, I'm worried about that. Absolutely not. There are something like, I think it's 60 million people in the UK, 50% of those, 30 million have got one or more. There's a huge opportunity. Same with weddings. It's same with newborns. There's a huge, huge opportunity out there. But to go back to the cheap competition locally question that people often come up with, that's all about positioning. So there are hundreds of dog photographers dotted around near, near where I live. And yes, they are charging a lot less, but it hasn't affected my business because I set myself apart by having a good service, a particular style, um, a, a particular a structure and strategy with my Facebook page and the whole social media plan, and a website that talks to clients in terms of the right kind of um, messages, and it works. And it's a bit like um, a Michelin star restaurant is not gonna get bothered by a, a, a burger van that sets up in the lay-by 200 yards down the road. Not interested at all, because it's completely different. His, his offering is setting himself apart. So don't worry about local competition. What you mustn't do is be drawn by it, because price discounting is a very short-term fix to a long-term death in terms of any business, not just photography. So, and that's, a, again, one thing that we do in the Academy. We work very closely with people, and I've worked with a lot of clients who've joined uh, the Academy, and they've said, right, okay, this is what I charge currently. And we've doubled, trebled, quadrupled what they charge. And they are getting more bookings because they're charging the right kind of prices. It's a bit like the age old age, you know, if it's too, you know, a Ferrari for 25,000 pounds looks suspicious. A Ferrari for 150,000 pounds is about right. So the, the pricing and strategy that we have to, you have to put in place to ignore the cheap competition is really important. And we will, we, we cover all that in some detail. So we do in the comments. Looks like it's all going on, which is good. Um, so, one of the most important things I always say is make a start. One of the things that is very common um, when it comes to thinking about setting up a business, or even if you've got a photography business and you're thinking, okay, I want to, you know, we've got some people in the academy who are wedding photographers who've moved into dog photography and vice versa, actually, interestingly. Um, but it's been something they've been thinking about for a while. And I suspect there'll be a number of people watching this video either live this evening or the replay of it who have been thinking, yeah, yeah, ne next year. I'm going to I'm going to set up a photography business. I'm, I'm retiring. I'm going to do it next. I'm going to do it in January, or I was going to do it in in the summer, but we were busy, and and it never really happens. And what goes on there is it's a sort of it becomes a crutch. Um, people are quite often get sucked into this trap of constant planning. And what you need to be doing is 90% doing and 10% planning. So I'm not advocating that you don't do any planning because you need to have a structure and understand what you're going to be doing. But that needs to be 10% of the time, and 90% of the time is doing make a start get things going 
you know, and the fact that you're here watching this or watching the replay is a sign that you're thinking about and taking some action. Um, so make a start, really important. So the, the, the next thing only I've got is network. Now, obviously I'm a dog photographer, so I'm very immersed in that world. Uh, and it's really important because I understand what's going on, what the trends are. I know most of the world's top dog photographers. I've, I've been lucky enough to work with some of them as well. Um, I'm on all the doggy Facebook groups, um, dog photography Facebook groups. You know, if you're a wedding photographer, you should be doing the same thing. Um, you know, if you're a newborn photographer, you should be doing the same thing. Um, just networking, getting, you know, if, if you're, if you think about local, your local area when you first start. So you, you think about something like, I don't know if anybody knows Kaylee Greer, dog breath photography, very famous, world famous dog photographer who I have the pleasure of, of meeting and, and knowing. Um, she started her business as a working in shelters for dogs in, in America and just doing some photos on the side. Um, but she was she was in that industry. She worked very, very closely and was very absorbed by that sort of network of individuals and um, working in kennels and so on. And look at her now. You know, she's one of the world's top dog photographers. So, you know, if you if you what that might look like for a new dog photographer in the UK is that. So what, what do your local vets do? Go where people who've got dogs go if you're a dog photographer you know so the local dog groomers the local pet shop the local dog training all that kind of stuff understand who they are get to know them networking it's the same with uh, newborns you know where's all the local mums and babies clubs you know where's the where's the local um sort of wedding venues all, all that kind of stuff it all when you start when i talk about it with clients they often go oh do you know what that all makes sense that's one of the things i put on the the sort of post about running this this um Facebook um, uh, webinar is that sometimes it's a lot simpler than you think. You just need to have a structure and somebody like me and the team saying to you, right, okay, these are things we need to be doing this week. These are things we need to be doing next week. So next thing, master your craft. Now this is um, kind of goes without saying, you need to be able to take photos that clients are going to want. You don't have to be an Ansel Adams or, you know, the best photographer in the world. You need to be able to take good quality photos that represent the kind of things that your clients want and that you particularly want to create yourself. Um, but mastering your craft is important from a point of view of not being uh, a master of all trades. I'm a real fan of, and it definitely works. Um, if you're, if you're my, one of my analogies is if, if I'm wanting to get an electrician, for example, to come and do some work on the house, um, and I literally go on Facebook, which is what people do these days, or Google it, and, and say, let's two, two come up. Fred's electrician's come up and I look at his page and, and I, he's got some pictures on there. He's got a few good reviews and he's done this job at the house down the road. And there's another one there and there's a couple of examples. And it's all he does is electrician stuff. I think, well, he looks pretty good. So he's possibly somebody I might click on and go, you know, I might inquire. But if um, the next person that pops up is a really good electrician, probably the same standard, but also does landscape gardening and plastering and tile cleaning and various other things, it's a little bit it's a little bit fragmented and my view is that that doesn't work and certainly been my experience so decide what you're good at decide what it is that's driving you what it is that you want to get from photography personally because it's got to come from a passion one of the things that i would always say is that that the, the the income side of things is a side effect of being really good at what you do if you if you decide to set up a photography business just because you want to make money then you, you'll probably be okay, you'll, you will make money because that, you know, especially if you're part of the academy because we can help you do that. But it, the people that make, you know, very significant incomes, you know, in the hundreds of thousands a year are people who do it because it's a passion and that comes across. And, and that helps with mastering your craft and working in a very specific area. Um, and then the next one on this slide is developing a personal style. It's one of the hardest things out there. People often say, oh, well, you know, my style is this, my style is that, I, I've just created it. It doesn't work like that. I've over five years developed my style such that people who see my photos now, photo, uh, photographs now, will often say to me, oh, I knew it was one of yours. I knew it was a Carl Thomas photography um, uh, image because I've developed a style. And it's an intentional thing that you have to start doing. It's hard work. It's not something you can do overnight. And what you have to do, um, and, and I'll just come on to why you need it, but what you have to do to create it is repeat it. Start, continue to take photos. And, and over a period of time, what will happen is, your, your style will start immersing or emerge from it. You'll start thinking, you know, I quite this edit I quite like or this type of framing I quite like. And when that starts to, to sort of develop, the more you do it, the more you repeat it, the more it starts to solidify in your business. And so people say to me, so why, why do I need a personal style? Really important. If you don't have a personal style, why are people going to book you? People book me because they know what they're going to get. They know my images are standout images. They know I've been in newspapers, all that kind of stuff. But they they like the fact that they're action shots, they're outdoor, they're natural. Um, 
They're very sharp images. They're capturing the dog's emotions and all that kind of stuff. And that is all about a personal style. And that's what people are buying. And if you don't have one, what are they going to buy? How, how are they going to come to you and say, OK, I'm going to book, you know, Mr. Photographer A because of. It's like not just because they're a photographer, not just because they're a wedding photographer or a portrait photographer, because I like their style. I'm going to a restaurant because I like their food. I'm going to a bar because I like the beer they serve. I'm going to book the photographer because I like their style. And if you don't have that, and it, it takes some time to develop it, you are, are going to be at a significant disadvantage. Um, so I'm just checking the comments here. I'll come back to them in a minute, but it looks like there's a few here, which is good. Um, so yeah, personal style, really important. Um, and so in terms of getting started, um, there's lots of things to consider. And obviously we can't cover all here tonight, but I just wanted to give you a bit of a flavor. And I'll come into the, the comments in a minute and start answering some questions, which is always the fun bit. But clearly you're going to need a portfolio. So what you need to start thinking about if you if you haven't started yet or you've got an existing business is look at your portfolio go back to that personal style thing and think okay is does this represent what i'm about does this represent what i would like my ideal client to see are they my best images um and so a portfolio is a really important thing to have uh, and everyone needs to have it make sure it is what you're selling not and it's a very common uh, issue that i see with people i work with all the time one of the things and it's quite natural and i get it so photographers who start a new business um, and especially at the moment with the various things changing, they've gone in a situation where they think, you know what, I'm going to start a new business because I don't have any choice or you know, I'll be made redundant or furloughed or whatever it might be. But one of the things they'll often think about is, OK, so I've got my portfolio. Let's assume now in the case for me, it's dog photography. So I've got, you know, 20 images in there that all look not nice. And I've got my Facebook page and we'll come on to this in a sec. And, and that all looks good. But also, you know, I want to demonstrate to people that I'm really good at photography. So here's all the landscape stuff I've done. Here's the stuff I did on holiday here. here here's all the portrait stuff I did. Here's the stuff I did at university. Um, I, I, my advice is not to do that because it's distracting. It takes people away. What you want people to come to when they see your portfolio is to focus on your style and your kind of images. So they go, that's what I want. The fact that you are you, you, you've done some wonderful images when you were studying at university or you're a fantastic landscape photographer is is great, but they're not interested in that. The, the demonstration of the quality of your work comes from the images they're going to look at. They're not going to go, they're not going to come to your page and let's say, let's say, say it's a wedding photography page or portraits or mother and baby, whatever it is. They're not going to come and look at those images and go, oh, actually, yeah, these are really nice. I love these mother and baby ones here and these newborns. These are really nice. Oh, I think I might book them. Oh, look, they do a really good landscape photography. I'm definitely going to book them. It doesn't work like that. And it's a, it's a totally common thing to do. And I totally get it. And I, you know, when I first started, I did the same thing. So uh, be intentional. Make sure your portfolio is just about what it is that you're looking to get clients to book you for. Now, the other things that we're going to need here um, that you need to think about, Facebook page, website, product offering and pricing. Now, um, I haven't got all a lot of time this evening to spend uh, about Facebook. But what I can tell you is Facebook is really important. Uh, well, social media. Read, read social media when you say Facebook. But certainly Facebook for for most photographers. Um, the Facebook algorithms are an ongoing thing um, and they are changing rapidly. So with the pros that are in the group, uh, pro aspiring pros that are part of the academy, every week I'm updating on all the algorithms, how it all works. How do you get 25,000 people following you in you know five years? How do you get that level of engagement? What do you need to do? How do you need to post? And I can tell you there's a lots of lots of rules and regulations that Facebook have, and it's a bit of a moving feast. And some would say it's like nailing jelly to a, to a wall, and, and sometimes it feels like that. But what you, a, a couple of tips, which obviously this is a webinar to help people. It's not just about telling me what I can tell you if you join the academy. So one of the, one of the most important things to think about when it comes to Facebook is um, that it's a community of individuals or, or users, us, you know, we're all consumers of Facebook. So if you've got a, if you've got a business page on there, your photography page, you, you want the people that are going to come to your page to have a, a rewarding, engaging experience. And Facebook is watching that. That is being monitored all the time. So if somebody comes to your page and they like something and they make a comment on it, that gives you a few ticks in the box. Facebook likes that. So there's a reasonable chance then that your images and your, your, your uh, stuff that you've got on your page is going to appear on other people's feeds. If you're not doing all that, then it's not going to happen. If you're constantly putting links in there saying, come and have a look at this website, if you think about if you think about it in terms of a if we're Facebook and we're a bar and it's slightly topical at the moment because we're not really allowed anywhere are we? but imagine we're a, a pub or a restaurant and we're Facebook and there's hundreds of us in there and it's all going on and it's happy hour and it's a really nice atmosphere and it's all bubbling that's what Facebook's trying to endanger you know we go on our our phones and we're scrolling down and thinking oh this is quite nice this is I'm liking this then all of a sudden there's a bloke in the corner going the dog and duck around the around the corner really good place go and have a look 
if this if if us if we were facebook and that was our 100 users let's say and obviously facebook had got several billion we're not going to be too enamored with that and so we're not going to encourage it so posts that you see on facebook that have got tons of copy and lots of links and at the moment clickbait which is kind of click here to do this like and share all i wouldn't say banned words but they're all things that are going to get your reach on facebook significantly reduced so you know keep it simple um keep it relevant and you know i've got as i think i've said a couple of times several thousand people twenty five thousand people follow my page i accept that a significant proportion of those people aren't clients but they follow my page because they love dogs and they follow my page because they like seeing the photos that i produce of dogs and so they're not going to be very happy if i if i'm constantly posting offers with links and and various things like that on it so you there's lots of things to consider when it comes to social media but those are a couple of important things website i think it's an important thing to have um it needs to be clear it needs to be concise it needs to show your portfolio um and it needs to be very specific about what you do so i mean the website side of things is is somewhat more straightforward and we can get into in the academy we cover seo and making sure you maximize it um but you know it's, it's a, a bit of a more straightforward thing the website's been around for a while the bottom two here product offering and pricing now what one is one thing setting yourself up as a photographer um uh, you know a professional photographer whether it's full-time or part-time the first thing we have to do is agree and work out what you're how, what you're going to charge for a photo session how does that work what can i charge what are my margins all those kind of things and that's something that's really really important um and it quite often is a lot more than you think it can be um but you also need to think about your offering are you going to be offering are you just going to be doing digital digital work which is fine or do you want to be offering frames what are you going to sell those frames for what are the margins how does all that work um and it's, it's kind of a thing called cost of doing business um one of the most common problems that i help help photographers sort of avoid or repair is the classic scenario of photographers been doing it for a few years doing okay you know we've got a bit of income in just not making enough money um and it's because usually because they're not charging enough um and they haven't probably haven't got the sort of social media strategy right but it's also sometimes not understanding the cost of doing business so you know it's not just the cost of the camera but you think about some of the things if you to get a piece of paper and write down all the things that affect what you do as a photographer um the cost of your camera the cost of the insurance of the camera the cost of being in say in, in the academy if you're part of the academy the cost of um lightroom or photoshop your time your fuel on your car the cost of your car the cost of training that you've done the cost of university that you got you to if you've gone through university to be, become a photographer what do i mean all these things all add up and it, having a good understanding of that uh, and a, and a, a process driven approach to it can be quite a surprise sometimes when i've worked with a lot of photographers and we've gone and done those sort of maths and, and they've suddenly realized that no wonder they're not doing so well because they're not making money because they're not charging enough or it means that when you work out the cost of goods or cost of doing business on an annual basis you project it forward and say well each month it's going to cost me that i've got i've got a studio for example some people got studios um and all those costs you work it all out and that might equal based on what they charge and what the typical selling price is going to be they might have to be doing 50 photo sessions a week it's not gonna happen um but if we do it properly you can work it back in normally get to a point where you know you need to be doing one session two sessions a week um to cover those costs and make a living and obviously a big part of the bit that goes on top of the cost of doing business is what you want to earn do you want to earn twenty thousand a year do you want to earn fifty thousand a year do you want to earn two or three hundred thousand pounds a year and by the way all those things are very possible but it, it, you won't get to those points if you don't understand what your cost base is and i know it might sound quite straightforward but you'd be amazing amount of people i work with where that doesn't that isn't quite right if that makes sense um so um a couple more slides i think and then i'll go, get into the comments and see, see if there's any questions so design a process lead management invoicing so get organized really important so before you start doing anything or if you already are a photographer one of the first things i do with people in the academy is like let's just understand how things work what do you do when somebody says hi carl i'm interested in a photo session or how does a photo session work um what is your process do you do you email them a pdf do you phone them um do you drop them a message and when you've done it how do you capture what you've done how do you know when you said what you said when um when somebody likes a comment on your page when somebody comments what do you say and having a process might seem like common sense but actually when you write it down and draw it all up it can make a huge difference to your business and then it leads that very nicely into lead management because then you know some people use spreadsheets some people use notebooks um, some people use these CRM platforms, which stands for customer relationship management. So, I mean, I, I use Studio Ninja, for example, 
which is brilliant. <laughs> but you know, some kind of process that where you can put customers in the top and you know they're a lead or they messaged you two weeks ago and said they were sort of interested so you can follow up. And having a, a really important um, structured process is makes life a lot easier. It makes sure you don't miss things. But more importantly, it means that your customers, which is this is what this is all about, get a good service. So if you say you're gonna get back to them in a few weeks time, um, you do. Or if they ask you for some pricing or they ask you for a quote, if it's a, if it's a wedding thing, you get back to them in a tiny manner. Um, so having a structure is really, really important. And it doesn't have to be on an expensive platform in terms of software. It could be a notebook, it can be post-it notes. It doesn't matter what it is. What's important is that you've got a system. You've thought about a process and you've got a way of doing it. Um, so, you know, I can't stress how, how important that is. And then obviously invoicing. I mean, it might seem straightforward, but you know, um, you need to be able to invoice customers so they can pay you. And so, I mean, I, I use PayPal. It works really well for me. So um, I can keep track of everything. Um, and people can use PayPal to pay, or they can pay directly by debit or credit card, and it's a simple process. Some people prefer to send an invoice out with bank details on, um, that's fine. One of the things I would say though with that process, there are a number of steps people have to then go through to, so somebody's booking a photo session, so I'm running an offer for example, with me, they just send me an email and I send them a, a, an invoice and it's done, it's all very, very smooth and very simple and they get receipts and all that. If you've got to do, if as a client, you've then got to go and switch on your phone, log on to your bank, set up a payee, and you know what it's like these days with fraud, there's so many more steps, so they might have to verify it by receiving a text. Sometimes people, you can lose people in that process. So I'm not saying don't do that, I'm just saying that's something to sort of seriously consider. And um, just seeing how we do over time. That's not too bad, half an hour, that's good. Um, so that's the last slide there, and I'm gonna get into some questions and a bit more chit chat. So this is one of my favorite sayings, it's obviously not me, Zig Ziglar. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Um, it is such an important thing. So let me just come back to the, um, the page a minute so I can see all these lovely comments and questions in here. Oh, it looks like there's a few in here, wow. Um, stop sharing that. Right, I'm back in the room. So um, obviously this is recorded, so you'll be able to watch and play that back. Um, I'm not gonna hide it, um, so you can watch those slides. So let's have a little look, what we got going on here. Let's have a little look, so. Uh, so first thought about that. Um, evening, Chris, one of our members. Yeah, so. Uh, Kirsten, so you're moving from hobby to business, do a mixture of work and paid. Yeah, so confidence. So, you know, hopefully that what I've talked about there will, will help you on that one. Um, yeah, that's another one. Uh, Kate, this is what I'm struggling to do. Uh, okay, yeah, this is quite a common thing, Kate. And uh, I think you've been on a couple of my webinars, which is great. So, so I'm struggling to do. I, I can't pick one area. I love product, brand, dog, newborn, family photography. The only one, th the, the only thing I don't know what to do is wedding. So there you go. I mean, it is, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some people out there who do all of it and that can work. But I, my personal view is, I think it's a lot better to be very focused and work on um, something specific. You know, if you're a wedding photographer and a pet photographer and a newborn photographer, um, it will be harder to maintain the level of enthusiasm for each one of those areas. Um, and they're very different clients. So your strategy from a point of view of social media it will, will have to be very much more complex because the, the, the way you will market towards pets and equine photography and, the, and, the, the, and the, the kind of people you need to get for that is very different to the way you're gonna market for newborns and very different from the way you're gonna market to get wedding photography. So, I mean, there are people, I know photographers who've got the structure like that, but they are completely separate businesses. And that's it. That's it. You know, and they've got staff and, you know, they've got a, a big business doing it. So it can be done. But I, I, my personal view is certainly from my own experience in terms of my dog photography business and the people are working with the academy. If you focus on, you know, one specific area or, or even just two, um, that can help. So like equine and dogs is something that is starting to become quite popular. Um, so that's something to consider. So it is definitely, uh, definitely a, cha a challenge. So where's it gone? So let's put it back up again so people can see it. So yeah, it is, it's, 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 you're not alone, trust me. Um, and what you, you just gotta start thinking about what is it, what, which one of those things do you, do you like? I mean, it's, if it's something you're doing already, then you'll probably find there'll be one that you sort of gravitate to, towards. You know, at the end of the day, you'll think, oh, I've, I had a good day today, I've done some newborns, I really enjoyed that. Um, or, oh, I've done a dog one, oh, that was a bit of hard work. So it, it's all kind of um, sort of self-driven in a sense. But it, it can be hard if you try and do the whole thing, which is kind of what I'm saying right there. So Phil's saying, what's the cost of the academy? So that's a good point, actually. I'm glad you asked that, Phil. <laughs> so <clears throat> one thing I'm not going to do 
because I've had so many of these webinars that I've been on where at the end they give you a big long spiel about join here and here's a bonus and there's this, that and the other and everything else. Not my style. Have a look at the reviews um, on Beyond the Lens Academy Facebook page. They speak for themselves um, and the, the website is open. Now, normally we are what's called a closed membership. And so what that means is um, we open the doors a couple of three times a year. And the reason we do that is we spend all our time working with our members on a very, very sort of exclusive basis. So whether a beginner, amateur or pro, so there's different levels of membership, but this is more likely to be the pro aspiring pro end because it's about starting a business. Um, and so there's unlimited one-to-ones in there. So if you join the academy at the moment, um, you can have this kind of conversation with me on a one-to-one -one basis. I've got a client I've spoken to three times this week on a one-to-one -one basis, new business on her uh, eighth booking in the last week, um, having set up five weeks ago. Um, and so you're doing really, really well. But part of the part of a part of the support structure that's in the academy is access to me on a regular basis. So that, that's a, a really important thing to consider. Now, <clears throat> and the reason we open as part of my ex explanation, the reason we only open a few times a year is because that's what we do in the academy. We are we're not just a bunch of it's not just a bunch of pre-recorded videos. Um, and if you go and look at the website, you'll see all the information's there. Um, but there's you know image critique reviews, there's a private Facebook group page, there's regular ongoing webinars. The training content that you'll see in the academy, if you are a member or, or you join at whatever level, the recorded stuff is recorded live with members. So it's a bit like this. So I might be talking about, uh, I don't know, um, what we were talking about. We're doing managing noise. Did one this week on managing noise. What is noise? How does it work? How do we manage it? With the kind of light that we've been dealing with in the UK recently, a bit of a popular thing. So I record that live, just like this. And people come in on the comments, members who, who can make the time live, and they'll ask questions. So it makes the, the webinar or the training video a bit more interesting, um, a bit more interactive. Those are then recorded, well, they're obviously recorded live, and then they're uploaded into the academy. And people can continue, continue to comment on those there. So um, there's a lot going on. So that's the reason, the reason we normally are not open until two or three times a year. What we've done, though, um, and it's a bit of an experiment, to be honest, um, and it's also, you know, I got so many questions last week about what are you doing for Black Friday? What are you doing for Cyber Monday? And it's just like, oh, blimey, it's nuts. So what we decided to do is just open the doors. So the last uh, uh, the last um, doors opening was a couple of weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago now, I can't remember, where we opened for three days um, and we had the office there, uh, uh, the price discounts at the moment, they vary as much as 50% on monthly and annual basis for each of the levels. Um, and so we've opened the doors and we've left those the same there. We've also added for the annual membership options because a lot of people have been buying them for partners for Christmas presents uh, and so all friends for Christmas presents. So that's what the annual one's quite handy for, apart from the fact that it's normally about 50% discount. So there's an extra 10%. It's all on the website. Um, so an extra 10% bonus on the annual ones. So the cost, it varies. So to, to I'm not avoiding the question, but the cost. So if you wanted to join as a pro aspiring pro, it's about normally when, when we, we, the prices have been increasing um, and because we've opened the doors again this time around, they are still less. But at the moment, it's about 90 quid a month or 89 pounds a month um, for the pro aspiring pro. Now, and obviously the annual one is about 900 quid, but there's a 10% discount on that. And that's, they are significantly discounted. Now, a couple of people have said to me, okay, well, that seems like quite a lot. And it is. You know, 90 pounds a month is a lot of money. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not hiding from it. But think about what you get. If you are thinking about setting up a dog photography, not a dog photography, a photography business, I always say dogs, that's what I do, but the people in the academy do lots of different things. If that's something you want to do, you're going to be buying cameras, you're going to be buying equipment, you're going to be buying this and the other. So, you know, what is that? 20 pounds a week to have somebody with five years experience as a professional dog photographer, with 30 years experience as a photographer, and God knows how much experience in terms of lots of different businesses, um, helping you, mentoring you on an unlimited basis. You go and do some Google, go and find out what it will cost you to have access to somebody who's literally on the end of a phone or on the end of a one-to-one -one as often as you need, uh, in addition to all the other things in the academy. Um, and just by way of example, so a couple of people, uh, just think, let's think. So Tony, one of our members, he went live probably four weeks ago now. I've got 400 followers already and really, really busy. Um, uh, Emma, one of our members, went live, ooh, I think it was back in August, September, and had has had eight, nine multi-thousand pound orders already. Well, not multi-thousand pounds, you know, thousand pound or just under orders already. So one order, depending on what kind of photography you, you're doing, so the 90 quid a, a month, you, you can that will be covered easily with one order. Uh, it's very likely that your first order or your first couple of orders will cover the cost of the academy for a year. And you've got to think about it in that context. It's about investing in your business. If it's a passion for you and it's something you want to do, then Think about investing. I did when I first started. I spent a lot of money going on courses and workshops, and I think that's helped me get where I've got 
today so much quicker. Um, so I hope that, hope that answers the question. But if you want, so if people want to join as a beginner, it's about it's twenty something pounds a month at the moment, and amateurs sort of in the middle, about forty something. Um, there are the annual options, which are significantly less. Um, the doors are open at the moment. Um, normally they're open for three days, but we've left them open. Um, I'm hoping to try to be able to keep them open for uh, you know until Christmas Eve, frankly, to be honest. But uh, at the moment, because we've had quite an influx of people coming in, um, it, it might be it might be a bit sooner. But right now. If you want to join, you can go and join. And if you've got any questions, obviously drop me a message. Um, right, what we got here? Recently got. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's interesting, actually. Yeah, no, that's quite a common thing. So any kind of photography, the income from street photography it, it is often um, driven by working with the media companies. So. Um, you know, stock photography, I mean, I've done a lot of commercial work, um, so in fairness, I haven't really touched on today, but commercial work is very popular. Um, and street photography, especially at the moment, uh, with the various things that have been going on um, in the world, you know, images of capturing life on the street and things that are going on are very popular. And people, you know, media agencies will pay good money for that kind of stuff. Um, and also selling prints, people like those kind of images. It's like landscapes, you know, you can you can make a lot of money from landscape photography if you've got the right marketing strategy in place. Um, so, yeah, I hope that helps that one. Let's have a look. Emma, one of our members. Can entering competitions help with publicity and getting your name out, especially with less target focused photography? So like landscapes, wildlife shots. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So let me give you an example. Um, where is it? Let me put my pictures up. So when we were in Scotland, I'll, actually, I'll come on to this. This will show you how people think about the point I talked about in terms of um, equipment. So this shot here, let me find it a minute. Where is it? There. So we did this up in Scotland, salmon jumping up the river, really quite hard, technically difficult to do. Um, but we, we did it, and that's, you know, that, that's fine. Now, I entered that in a little competition, and people sort of say to me, you know, why do you do it? And it's exactly for the reason that you've said, Emma. Now, this is Farlow's. Now, Farlow's is a shop in Pall Mall. They're a bit like a barber, hunting, fishing, shooting shop, sort of sell everything tweed. Um, I entered that competition. Um, and admittedly, the final choice is about the people who got the most likes. Now, obviously, with my social media following, that certainly helped that. But the first, the top five are picked by Farlow's, and they've got 30,000 people following them. So that's now, that is now on the Farlow's page. And it's, it says Carl Thomas has won it. And it, have I made a lot of money of it? It's a £100 voucher. But, you know, it's getting out there. And an another example of things that I've done in terms of getting the name out. So if you're into doggies, you'll have heard of the Gun Dog Journal. Um, now, uh, in terms of networking, um, this is this goes to sort of working with the right kind of clients, as in well, no, understanding your perfect client. You know, and a lot of people that I work with that, you know, book me are people, you know, who like these kind of things. You know, this is not my image, but, you know, spaniels and, and gun dogs and stuff. It's very, very popular. And I shoot everything. But in here, um, they did a feature, um, what do they call it? Let me find it. How to take, can see it there, look. How to take great gun dog images. That's my photo there. That one there, can't see it, what to do it is. Um, and there is a section, there's one of my photos. Beautiful dog called Hunter, I did that one a while ago. And this is all me written on about how to take good photos. So it, it a big part of the business side of it, a big part of the thing that I help people in the academy about is, yes, of course, I, we work with people on a one-to-one -one basis and we do workshops all about taking better photos, mastering your craft, all of that side of it. But to be frank, that's the easier thing. Being able to take a decent photo is something that with the support that we've got, we can get people to that very quickly if they're not already there. The bit that's the challenge that we do and I help people with is all the kind of stuff I've just talked about, the networking. What do I need to do to get myself out there? How does Carl Thomas get people to spend six or seven thousand pounds on frames and images? It happens. Not every day, but I have had people spend that. I get people to spend a hundred pounds. You know, it's a whole range of things. Um, so let's just I'll come back to the comments in a, in a sec. But what I wanted to show you is um one of the things that I just to is illustrate the point I make about not needing to have very expensive equipment. So this image I took with my camera, yes, it's a 1DX Mark II and a 70 to 200 Mark III lens Canon. So there's like seven grams worth of kit, kit there. And so that, that came out really well, lovely image. Now that was in the Scotland workshop, and that's another thing we do in the academy. We've got wildlife workshops. There's, there is a space left on the one in the Cairngorms. If you go to the website, you'll see it. And there's also a couple of spaces left on the one in Ireland next year. So if you, if you want to get immersed with photography and spend time around people that do what I do, have a look at those, because they're wonderful. But anyway, this is what we did in October. 
and that's my shot. Now, there's a, one of our members came with us, and that's this is the shot she managed to take. And it's just a sharp, slightly different composition. It's quite nice with this, the salmon's tail sort of flicked up. Um, but if, if I was to put those two side by side, you wouldn't be able to tell what kind of camera it was. But I can tell you that it's the two extremes. So mine is the top end of Canon's gear. The one that this one here is taken on a very old Canon 70D, which I mean, I, can't, I, I, I think that's a 10 year old camera in terms of when it was launched, fairly basic crop sensor camera with a very average lens. But knowing the settings, knowing what to do technically with the camera made the image stand out. So being a professional photographer, part time, full time is not about spending a fortune on gear. Don't do it. You really don't need to. So let's get back to questions. Um, so let's have a little look. So yeah, I, I think I answered that one. I did, yeah. So Kate's question. Uh, what's the best way to sell stock photos to stock photography websites? Um, well, the best way of doing that is pick one of the best. I, 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 I don't do it, I don't have time. But um, Adobe have got one, there's Getty Images. There's lots of different companies out there that have the ability for you to upload images or create an account and, and start selling stock photography. It can be quite lucrative, providing you put the effort in. Um, what you have to think about with stock photography though is, it's not necessarily about the photography you like, it's about the kind of photography people want to buy. And what you can do, so if you go into Adobe Adobe stock, they'll tell you, and you can create an account, it takes like 10 minutes, um, and you have to do a little tax form, which takes a few minutes, and then you, you, then you exist, and you can start uploading images. Um, and the two really good things about stock photography, the first one is, is another form of feedback, because if, they, if you upload 10 images today, normally within a day or two, they'll come back and say they've been accepted or this one's been accepted, this one has, but these weren't because it had a bit of noise in it, or we've got loads of images like that already, or it wasn't tax sharp. So you're getting a bit of a free feedback loop, so that's point one. And point two, of course, is you get paid. It's a recurring revenue. Now, you don't earn millions straight away, and it's typically you know 20p's, 30p's, and 40p's, but they add up. Um, so what you're, the, the best way to maximize it is to think about it as a, like a little business. And you, the, the people that make the money, the people that have got themselves set up and over a year or two have got themselves to a few thousand pounds a month just coming in every month um, are the people that go out every, literally every day and they say, right, today I'm going to do a load of stock photos. And it will be things like you've got, what you've got to think about is, OK, if I'm doing pictures of landscapes or street photography in, in the crop that I'm going to upload, is, is it like this or is it like that? So there's room for, sorry, room for text What's it called? over here. Is the room on the side of a text um, and all that kind of stuff. So stock photography is something that is, I certainly think is a, a good idea. Um, and a few of the members are doing it. Um, it's one of the things that's, that's been on my list for a while, but I've just been so busy, I'm not, uh, not had time to do it. So good evening, Rob. Another one of, the, one of our potential joiners. He's talking about it. We were having a little chat the other day. So um, how are we doing for questions? It looks like we've got quite a bit of quite a bit of content, which is nice. So I always like sort of the, the interaction. Um, so is there anything else you want to know? What, what haven't I covered? Um, so I've talked about the academy. So say the, the doors are open, the offers are there. Um, they, we're not going to, leave, I don't think we're going to leave one for Christmas because we're, we're just busy. What I can tell you, and this is not a sales pitch, but um, the unlimited access to one-to-one. -one. So if you join as a pro aspiring pro, um, the unlimited one-to-ones of me will be something we're going to stop at some point um, so that we can maintain the level of feedback and the level of one-to-one -one availability for the existing members. So that's point one. Point two is that um, whatever level you join the Academy at, if it's something you're interested in, you know, you can link, click on the link and go and join. Um, I'd love to have you inside. We, everybody who joins the Academy gets a one-to-one. -one. So I have a personal one-to-one, -one. I've done two today actually, um, with new members where we have a conversation. There's a form that you fill out online, which tells me all about the camera gear you've got, why you joined, what what's, what your challenge is, what you want to get from the Academy. Um, and you know, that, that, that's true of a beginner or even a pro. So if you're a beginner, it might be that you've just bought your first camera or it's on your Christmas list. I've got a couple of people doing that and they want to know how to use it properly. They want to get off auto. If you're a pro, it might be, you know, I want to change direction. If you're an amateur, I might want to, I might, uh, I want to get better action photos. I want to, I want to um, maybe do stock photography. And so understanding all that's important. So we do that for everybody. Um, and then for the amateurs that we do at the moment, there's, an un there's a one-to-one -one every month at least. Um, and then there's, for the pros, they're unlimited. Um, but all the other contents there. So there's, you know, um, a private Facebook group. There's the ability to contact me on a regular basis. So it's not a very bland bunch of videos you're going to be watching. So um, the doors are open. If you want to join, you know, you're more than welcome. If it's not right for you at the moment, what I suggest you do, if you go to the website, is there's a mailing list. Now, I don't send tons of emails out. I think I've sent one out about this webinar because I hate getting tons of emails myself. So 
what I what I would suggest you do, if, if the academy is something that you're thinking about, but it's not quite right for you at the moment, for whatever reason, that's obviously fine. And I'll, I'll try and do these, these sort of webinars um, fairly regularly. I can't do them too often because I'm spending most of my time in the academy, but I do try and come on Facebook and sort of help and answer a few questions as often as I can. But if you get yourself on the mailing list, then I, I'll let you know a number of things. When I'm doing these webinars, when they're a training webinar like this, when we are, we're about to launch all the workshops for next year, so I'm working on the dates now. So for the two-day dog photography ones, or photography ones that we do in Neo here, the, the dates for those are going to go live. There's also um, the other workshops we're going to be doing next year. So we've got Isla at the moment in June, uh, two weeks in June in Isla. Um, well, it's two separate weeks, really, one after the other, and there's a couple of spaces left on the second week. Same for the Cairngorms one. There's a one space left on that. That's almost gone. But we're going to be doing some more during the rest of the year. So all that sort of stuff will get announced on the on the emails. Um, but say, I don't spam people. And if you, if you don't like it, you can unsubscribe anyway. But it's worth doing because then you can find out what we're doing. Let's have a little look. Let's have a look at some of these comments. Um, this looks like it says he has new comments. Can't see it. Where's he gone? Ah, right, okay. Uh, yeah. Andrew's one of our members. It's, it's interesting. There is actually a, a webinar, Andrew, uh, in the Academy, all about stock photography. I um, can't remember which section it's in. I think it's in a thing called The Hub. And, that, and if everybody else is watching, um, if you join as a beginner or amateur pro, you get access to those levels with all the content that's very specific for those levels. If you join as an amateur, you get amateur plus beginner, obviously. If you join as a pro aspiring pro, you get all of it. But everybody gets a thing called The Hub. And The Hub is content that is a combination of training videos, um, resources to do links about things that I buy or products or services, whatever it is. Um, but it's also got um, content that goes across all of the different levels. So stock photography, for example, is something that we did and I put that in the hub. There's a webinar in there, it's about an hour, all about how you do it, what the pro, you know, what the pitfalls are, how to get it set up on Adobe, but there's lots of other ones there. So that's that's certainly worth worth looking at. Um, what's that saying? Yeah, have a look. Um, but yeah, definitely there. Um, what we got here thank you very much for your top advice it was much needed do you mind if we can use your wonderful quote so i'm sorry thank you very much for your advice very much needed. do you mind if we if we can use your wonderful quote use your name by contact yeah of course you can yeah absolutely yeah 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 well the quote i put at the end is zig ziglar if you're talking about the one that is if you haven't got to be great to start but you've got to start to be great it's not my quote i stole it so, but I put his name on it, I've credited him. So if that's the one, yeah, don't say that's Carl Thomas because that's not fair, it's a Zig Ziglar one, but it's one of my favorite quotes. Another one that I like, it's not one of mine, is people say to me, what's the best camera? The best camera is the one you got with you. You know, sometimes that's an iPhone. We are actually in the process of doing, um, uh, setting up some um, modules all about smartphone photography. So I'm just gonna show you an image. I think I showed you it on the screen on the presentation, but there you go. That is an iPhone shot. Um, so is this actually? My half to this, one of our dogs. Very popular photo that is. Um, so yeah, there's um, there's lots of new stuff coming in the academy, and we are planning at the moment for 2021. So we, we've got some pretty new, exciting features coming along for next year, over and above all the stuff that's in there. And I say, have a look at the reviews. You'll see what see what people are thinking about what we do. Um, what else can I tell you about the academy? That's probably it, really, for the moment. How are we doing for time? 56 minutes. So you know, I promise I wouldn't take up too much of your time. So if, if anybody's got any other questions, pop them in. If not, I will sort of leave you in peace. Um, doesn't know what there are. So thanks very much for listening. I hope that's been useful. And honestly, if you are thinking about setting up a business or you've got an existing business and you wanna you wanna turbocharge it and make some more money with it, full time, part time, don't be don't be put off. Think about the academy. You know, and, you know, a couple of the marketing team have said to me, why don't you just say to people, if they join as a pro and aspiring pro, you can guarantee they're going to cover their costs. Well, I could say that um, and we could put a guarantee in like that. We don't need to. You know, it, it, it does cover the costs um, by a long way. So have a think. It's all about investing in your future. Um, so I'd love to see you in the academy. That would be great. Um, but if, if it's not right for you, well, as I say, one of the things I would seriously recommend you do is get yourself on the mailing list because I'm going to be doing more and more of these webinars. I mean, they will be every week, but certainly do more of because I think it's important. You know, one of the things that one of the reasons I set up the academy was that, you know, having access to information that is, you know, relevant was was difficult. There's lots of YouTube stuff out there, but having somebody's prepared to share. And, I'm, you know, people ask me questions all the time, as you've seen this evening. I'm pretty open about it. Um, and if you're in the academy, one of the things that um, I think it's probably worth pointing out is that, you know, if you 
if you join and you want to set up a business, you know, I don't hold back. There's no secrets to what we do in the academy. You know, I will share with you everything I've done over the last five and a half years in my dog photography business and the commercial side of what I do. Because, you know, I've been in the newspapers. I've done work for various, you know, huge um, pet brands and stuff like that. Um, so th there's all those things that I share. And that 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 knowledge in terms of the marketing business side of it, it's not just about dogs. That, that applies to weddings it applies to street photography it applies to newborns and you know portraiture whatever it does all those things are relevant and i share everything uh, there's no holds barred um and it's quite a lot of detail you know some people would say oh let's talk about social media and so on some platforms that's like a video well i, I can tell you that it's in us it's an ongoing sequence of events because social media is moving and changing on a daily basis almost uh right so there's some more comments questions let's have a look and Okay, Andrew. Yeah, brilliant. Perfect. Uh, what's Emma saying? Yeah, brilliant. So Emma's one of our members. So yeah, it's great. It's, uh, it's great to see all the feedback. Um, say, have a great evening. I'm going to leave it. Look at this. Fifty nine minutes and seventeen seconds according to the timer. Anyway, so I'm pretty good tonight. I like. I say I like to keep it to an hour. Um, so look, um, thanks for your time. If you want to join the academy, it would be great to have you in there. The discounts are, are mad at the moment. It's fifty percent up to fifty percent off the monthly and annual ones, and there's an extra ten percent code. Um, I think it's I think it's called Black Friday, but you see it on the website, which makes the annual one even even um, more attractive. So have a think. If it's something you want to do, then brilliant. But if not, get yourself on that mailing list, so at least I can then keep you informed in terms of all our webinars and stuff. So have a great evening. Thanks for watching, and see you soon. Bye.